I have the funniest story because yesterday I landed, had some, tr not trouble at the airport, but I couldn't find my way out. Found my Uber lady, and I still got in the car. I was like, hey, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. And at one point, we're like, we get close to the hotel, and she stops me. She's like, can I just ask you something? I said, sure. She's like, what are you doing? You're like so happy. We were talking about murders, and she's like, you're so happy. I'm like, funny that you ask. I'm at this workshop, and she's like, and I'm like, let me give you the name. She's like, no, I won't listen. I go, you should. I'm like, just write it down. I'm like, you can watch on videos, everything. She's like, okay. And then I walk in, and I, <laughs> I have new friends. And I walk in, and I'm like, minding my business. And I turn around, this girl's like, you here for Abraham? And I'm like, is it written on my face? <laughs> and I left, I went to my room, and we connected later, and she's like, hey. Oh, and mind you, let me backtrack. I was on the plane, I was segment attending, and I'm like, it'd be really great to rendezvous with cool people, it'd be really great to rendezvous with Esther, it'd be really great to have my room upgraded for free and get free cocktails. <laughs> And I run into my new friend at the bar. She's like, when you left, funny story. She's like, they, my room wasn't ready. And they upgraded my room for free. And I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> so I just wanted to start that off. We funny. like your stories because that is the connecting the dots that we're talking about. Yeah. The acknowledgement of, I felt this way and this happened. When something wonderful happened, especially as Esther was just learning about all of this, something wonderful would happen and she would say, I did that. And then something not so wonderful would happen and she would say, I did that too. Yeah. <laughs> because getting a hold of what your point of attraction is, is what deliberate creating is about. Yeah. 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 So you have a question for us? Yes. Oh, sorry, your time is all up. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> So I, for a while I was sitting, I'm like, if I get in the hot seat, what will I ask? And I, all of a sudden I had this overwhelming feeling. So I work with animals and I'm going to try not to cry. Say more. I work with animals. I'm a dog groomer. Um, I work with rescue animals. I work with sanctuary animals. And obviously they think they're working with you. <laughs> it's true, so true. <laughs> so my question is, is when they transition, is it, do we get reconnected with them when we transition? It all depends upon the relationships. Right. In other words, not with all of them. It would right. be busy. I'm fine about that. I'm fine about all, all of them instead of humans. But You come into this experience in clusters, and there are a whole lot of people that you are rendezvousing with that you have had many experiences with. So why is this important to you? I would like to know if, if, if you were in our human form, what can I tell clients when their animals pass to give them some peace. I mean, obviously, I believe that. We'll tell you a couple of stories. So some years ago, Jerry and Esther were visiting some friends in Portland, and they saw them once a year, and they always went to their house, and they always had a barbecue and picked cherries from the big trees, and they always had a nice time, and their big black dog was always there. And then this time they showed up and they were having the barbecue and they were getting all of their cherries picked and all of the things that they usually did. And they sat down to eat and Esther said, where is this big black furry beast? And they both immediately went into sad mode because since Jerry and Esther had been there last, that dog who was very old in human years had made his transition. And Esther said, well, the reason I ask is because he keeps running past. I've never experienced anything like it. I keep having this sensation that he's over there and then he's over there and then he's over there. I halfway expected my clothes to be blowing. And it was the first time that Esther had ever had an experience with non-physical in a beast. She's aware that lots of her dearly not so departed are hanging around, but she had not realized that. And so relationships are eternal. And the thing that you have to know is that you are the attractor of your experience. So if you have lost your furry friend, he's not lost. In fact, still aware of you, still aware of you. But this is the most important thing in human to non-physical communication. You gotta know that being non-physical is really good. It's clarity, it's fun, it's free, it's full, it's whole, it's love. 
And so if you are mourning the loss of somebody, that's not where you are. So you're doing step one, you're asking, and furry friend is doing step two is answering but you're nowhere near the receptive mode so even though sabbath is running all over the place for them all the time too they did not even know it their sadness prevented them from recognizing his presence now is he running around there all the time no he's got other things to do <laughs> but anytime you are wanting words from anyone they're there for you non-physical is awesome it's multitasking on steroids <laughs> so if we were standing in your physical shoes and you were wanting to comfort someone you've got to know where they're at and if they're sad and they usually are you got to say to them I don't blame you for being sad I get that but your is not sad and so if you want to feel that then Pay attention to when you accidentally get happy, when you're forgetting that you're supposed to be mourning the loss of someone, and you forget for a minute, and something lifts you out of that for a minute, and you're accidentally happy for a minute, and then you get an impulse about that. That's real. And then almost as soon as you get that impulse, then you turn back to your sad person, because that's the way you're supposed to be about death. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. There isn't any death. We like to mock it. We call it croaking. Yeah. Because That's, I've, been, I've been trying to do that with people there isn't any death but go easy about it you have to be sensitive one day the neighbor's dog came over and raised a ruckus in Jerry and Esther's chicken yard years ago and hurt some chickens and killed some chickens and Jerry said Esther get Abraham and she couldn't she was too shook up she was too sad the massacre had been brutal <laughs> and when she settled down and began talking to us we said focus on the chickens who are still alive well that helped Esther a lot and then later when a friend of hers husband died and Esther said that to her friend it didn't go over very well <laughs> you kind of have to know where people are and that's the thing about your inner being and their inner being you see your inner being and the person who's suffering the loss of someone inner being is always watching for the perfect opportunity to give information so just trust it just plant some seeds you know you answered your own question with the first part of what you said to us here you're talking about murder <laughs> and obviously happy girl <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you teach through the clarity of your example, don't you? <laughs> and so if you are working with people, with animals, and you're understanding this, there's such power in true knowing. And true knowing is knowing what your inner being knows because now your point of attraction is the same. There's such leverage in that kind of attraction. And people, especially when they're asking in a strong, hard way, they're more likely to hear, especially from someone who's not suffering over the loss of their, whoever it is. Don't suffer because you're supposed to. Don't suffer because it's just not nice not to suffer. I'm supposed to act sad. Well, why carry on that myth, that trending? Say, I'm not sad about this because I know you're going to meet up soon. Tell them why you're not sad about this. Oh, you've, de you've definitely helped in that part, but... Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Really good. Thank you. Yeah.